Good morning, Calling family. Welcome to church at home. We are so glad to be spending this time together this morning to worship our God. We serve a good God, amen. I want to hear you out there. I know I can't really hear you, but I want to hear you say amen. God is good. God gives us peace in the midst of times when we don't understand, when there's chaos. And I love that promise from our God that he's going to deliver that. Right now, there's so much chaos in our world. There's things you might be going through at home that we have no idea about. But I want to encourage you this morning that God is the God of peace. In the midst of everything, he can calm the storm. Amen. So I want to encourage you this morning to dive in. Ask him for his peace. Thank him for his peace. Because he's a good God and he's going to come through for you. Amen. I don't want to be afraid every time I face the way. I don't want to be afraid, I don't want to be afraid, I don't want to feel the storm just because I hear it roar, I don't want to feel the storm, I don't want to feel the storm, and peace be still, say the word and I will set my feet see till I'm dancing in the deep and peace be still you are here so it is well even when my eyes can't see I will trust the voice that speaks I'm not gonna be afraid Cause these waves are only waves No, I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna be afraid No, I'm not gonna fear the storm Cause you are greater than its roar No, I'm not gonna fear the storm No, I'm not gonna fear it all Let's sing out, church And peace be still Say the word and I will Set my feet upon the sea Till I'm dancing in the deep And peace be still You are here so it is well Even when my eyes can't see I will trust the voice that speaks And peace
Jesus. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus to break, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. And there is power in the name of Jesus. Chain, to break, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Let's sing one more time. To break, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Cause you have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. It's all yours, and yours is the Thank you this morning for all that you have done in our lives, all that you're doing, God. We know that the best is yet ahead, and we thank you in advance. We love you. And all God's people say together, amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Sunday morning church at home experience. My name is Ronnie. I'm your life groups leader, and this is my wife, Carmen. Hi, church. It's Angry Calling Kids uh, leader here at The Calling. Um, we wanted to say how blessed we are here to be today. Um, we have a special few, an announcements for you. Um, as your Calling Kids leader, we want to let you know that we have a amazing church at home experience for all you calling kids uh, please head over to our website and hit the kids tab and sign up you'll receive our weekly um, lesson that we send out via email on Fridays that provides you with all the worship the Bible lesson plan and a special family discussion guide one of the things that we value the most here at The Calling is community and building relationships. We, The Calling Kids, have our own Zoom hangout every Friday at 3 o'clock. All that information is found on the website. We highly encourage all of you to please visit and sign up. Also, this coming Sunday is our special 4th of July service, Sunday the 5th. We want to encourage you to tune in at 11 a.m. on YouTube. Uh, we are going to have a special time of prayer where we remember our nation and we give thanks for uh, everything that this nation has meant to us. And so we want to encourage you not only for you to join us, but for you to invite your friends, your family, your neighbors. Let them know we're having a special 4th of July service. And now it's offering time. Uh, we want to encourage you to continue your worship as we can as we give unto the Lord and as you prepare your gift we would love to share a verse with you that has meant so much to our family especially during the season of coronavirus um, in Psalms 112 verse 7 reads they do not fear bad news they confidently trust the Lord to care for them church these past three months have been very difficult for so many um, for us as a single income household we've seen a significant decrease in our household income and finances but we chose to continue to trust in the Lord to give in the little that we had and God has provided for us in multiple ways that we could not even imagine um, 
In fact, we're so better off right now financially than we were, we were before this quarantine. And it is because we chose not to fear that bad news. We chose to confidently trust the Lord. And so we want to encourage you this morning, wherever you're at, whatever season of life you find yourself in financially, to trust in God, to continue to stay faithful in your giving. And we guarantee you that as you stay faithful to God, He will stay faithful to you and provide for every one of your needs. So let's pray for our offering this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so thankful, Lord, for every gift that you have provided, God. We ask, Lord, that you would be with everybody who's struggling financially, God, that you would continue to bless them. Lord, that you would give them to cur the courage to take a step of faith, not to view things with a fear, God, but to view things with their faith, God. We ask, Father, that you would help us to give, Father. Help us to remember, Lord, that we don't give to the church, God, but we give through the church, Father. Use us, God. Use our finances, Father. Bless those, Father, that gave this morning and make a way for those that wish to give but were not able to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, good morning, church. So good to see you. Uh, very happy Sunday uh, to you. Very glad to be with you this morning. I don't know about you, but can we just do something real quick? Uh, I just want to give some praise to our Abba Father because he has been so, so good to me. He's been so, so good to our church. Can you just join me right now for a moment? Maybe you're with your kids, maybe with your family. Uh, I don't know about you, the Bible, but the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. And I don't know about how, how many of you can just testify right now of the goodness of God in your life. So let's just go ahead and clap it up for a moment and say, thank you, Abba Father. You are so, so good. God, we bless you for all of the things that you have done for us in our life and beyond the things that you've just done for us. God, we just bless your name for who you are. You are good, period, and no comma. You are good. You're always good. Your name is good. Your blessings are good. Your presence is good. So Father, we just bless your mighty name in the name of of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen. Hey, uh, you got to get in the habit of practicing some worship. Come on, some of you. Uh, I'm so happy that you're tuning in right now uh, on a Sunday morning, but some of you haven't really worshiped, all right? You might have just sat on the couch and watched Kareem do worship. Uh, I just want you maybe replay it at the, end, at the end of the message and just worship, worship. Worship is your weapon in a season like this. The Bible says today is the day that the Lord has made. I will, we will rejoice and be glad in it. So, so good to be with you this morning. And I always, uh, I, I do this uh, as a practical thing every single day is I just worship my father in heaven. Why? Because he's so, so, so good. So, so happy to be here with you this morning. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had your, your breakfast, uh, your breakfast burrito, you know what I'm saying, and your coffee. And uh, I'm so excited to preach the scriptures to you this morning. We are going to be in Acts chapter 20, verse 17 through 36 in the NIV. If you have a, a, a cell phone, if you have your Bible, uh, I'm old school. I like to print, you know what I'm saying? But if you, if you have your, uh, uh, the app or the, uh, uh, so forth, go ahead and get that out. Uh, I want to uh, take some time this morning to actually teach the scriptures. Say teach. Uh, I think preaching is awesome. I love preaching. Preaching is catalytic. It's inspiring. It's, 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 it gets you uh, up. Uh, but at the same time, we need good teaching. All right. We need good teaching. Why? Because we need to grow up in our faith. It's one thing to be inspired. But I don't know about you, but just throughout the week, it's ups and downs. It's highs and lows. And we need good practical teaching from the scriptures to help us walk out our faith and live out our faith practically in, the, in this life that we live. So uh, in my personal devotion time, I've been in the book of Acts. I've been enjoying it. Holy Spirit's been speaking to me and I wanna preach and teach uh, to you this morning in Acts chapter 20. So go ahead and go to Acts chapter 20, verse 17 to 36 uh, in your Bibles. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read the scripture and then we're gonna pray. Actually, can we do this? We, we had done this uh, at our church every single Sunday. All right, I would love for you to do this with us right now, with me. Um, what we do is we stand for the reading of God's word. I have a few audience members. They're gonna stand right now. Um, uh, we're gonna stand for, the, for God's word. Why? Because God's word is powerful. It's alive 
and it's active. Come on, someone. All right. So we're going to honor the Word of God by standing for the Word of God. If you're at home, please go ahead and just stand up right now. It's a free country. You don't have to, but I want to encourage you. If you're going to stand for anything in this world, stand for God's Word. Come on, someone. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, read Acts chapter 20. It's a little bit of verses, but stay with me. All right. Stay with me. I see you right there. Don't get off this phone. All right. Don't get off the TV. All right. That notification can wait. All right. Uh, So we're going to be Acts chapter 20. Verse 17, and it says this, from Miletus, and now this is Paul, from, my, uh, from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus, say Ephesus, write Ephesus down in the chat, Ephesus. Uh, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, you know how I lived. You know how I lived. The whole time I was with you from the first day I came into the province of Asia, I served, all right, 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 I served in the chat. Say, I serve. Look to someone, look to your dog, look to your someone, your cat, all right, your, 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 your nephew, your niece, all right, let's say, I serve. Say, I serve. I serve the Lord with great humility, with tears, although I was severely tested by the plots of the Jews. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house, I have declared both Jews and to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. Verse 22, and now compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Verse 24, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race that to, and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me. Come on, somebody. The task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Oh, let me, I just want to stop real quick. I want to teach you real quick that God's grace can build your life up in the name of Jesus, giving us the unmerited favor of, of God, his blessing through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of you right now are knocking yourself because you sinned today. You sinned last night. You sinned a week ago. Maybe you said something. Maybe you thought something. Maybe you did something. But let me tell you, receive the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that can build your life up. That's what Paul's whole mission was, was preaching and teaching the good news of the gospel, the grace of Jesus. Come on, someone. All right. Go ahead and write grace down in the chat. Uh, Now I lost my soul. Okay, verse 25. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching. Now watch this. This is where, where, this is where the topic or the, the scriptures get very dramatic in a way and emotional. Watch this. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom, watch this, will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men. Verse 27. For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Yet keep, uh, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of, the ho- of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave savage wolves, I know you're still standing. Bear with me, all right? Bear with me. Take a drink of water, all right? Uh, I know that after I leave savage wolves will come, uh, 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 come in among you and will not spare the flo- flock. Even from your own number, watch this, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after themselves or them. So be on your guard. Write guard right now on the chat. Say, write guard, guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. 33, I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I said I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus himself, who said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. 36, when he had said this, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. 38, what grieved them the most was his statement that, would, that they would never see his face again. They accompanied him to the ship. Let's go ahead and pray for the message this morning. You guys may be seated. Thank you for standing. Father, we just come before you this very moment. 
Father, we recognize our need for you, Holy Spirit. God, we recognize that this world is chaotic. God, we can't even open up a a social media platform without being inundated with crazy information and being forced to choose a side and that side and this side. Father, we need your presence in our life and in our walk and in our homes. Father, most of all, we know that there are a lot of voices out there, but we wanna know your voice. The Bible says that the sheep know your voice, that they hearken to your voice. And so Father, I ask that you would speak through me, encourage, build, strengthen the body, Lord, this morning. And I pray, Father, that every person that is watching or will watch during the week, that by listening to the message that they will feel your presence with them and feel that the world can be a good place because you're with us, God. We pray that you bless the message, bless the hearers in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, amen and amen and amen. So I'm so glad to be with you this morning. I really wanna teach and preach a a scripture that I've been meditating on during the week in the book of uh, Acts chapter 20. And uh, I I just really wanna teach it because I believe that teaching is so significant for us as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. A little bit of the context for you. This is Paul's final conversation, final trip to the Ephesian church in the book of Acts. This is a beloved church that Paul had planted, that he had uh, served and lamented and sacrificed with. And uh, part of his mission was to go to Jerusalem. He felt inspired by the Holy Spirit promptings of the Spirit to go to Jerusalem, although he did not know uh, what the outcome would be. Let me tell you something, let me park a thought real quick. A lot of times that the Holy Spirit speaks to us, he may give us some information but not all the information. In fact, five years ago, the Holy Spirit told me, Michael, I want you to plant the calling church. But five years ago, he did not tell me that there was gonna be a pandemic in 2020. Do you know what I'm saying? In other words, the Holy Spirit wants to give you what you need to help you right now. Because if he gives us so much, too much information, you might not do it. You You know what I'm saying? So the Holy Spirit tells Paul to go to Jerusalem because he knows that there's some situation there that's awaiting him. And we know what happens, but at this point, he doesn't exactly know. And before he gets to Jerusalem, he, said he, he wants to make a pit stop to the Ephesian church because he loves them. This is a strong church. This is an amazing church that he planted. And I, a lot of times that I'm reading these uh, epistles and letters, I can relate to Paul because I too planted a church that I love and that, uh, the, the people that I think about, our city that we're in and the difference that we're making and, and so forth. So he planted this church. And in and, and, and a chapter before Acts chapter 19, we see that his he was very successful because there was uh, 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 the Greeks, uh, the Greeks uh, idol Artemis. There was a riot in the city because the Christians said that, the, that those idols are no gods at all and, and their business is going down because no one's buying their, uh, their idols. So uh, what ha- ends up happening is they riot, all right, because we know that Paul had made such an impact on that city. All right, so Acts chapter 20. Now Paul is in, in, in the Ephesus church And he's telling the elders of the church, the leaders of the church, not the whole church, but he's calling an elder leadership meeting. And he's he's sitting down with him. And he's telling him, I I will never see you again. Can you imagine that? The last words you could think about telling someone you love, people you love, I will never see you again. And and, and upon this, I, I wanna take some few points to teach you this morning of what Paul taught his elders that day be, uh, in regards to, I will never see you again. So uh, these are some things that you should do because I won't be here anymore. I planted this church, but the Lord is gonna carry on the work of this church and God has anointed you and called you. In fact, the Holy Spirit leaders is the one who chose you to lead the church, all right? So there's a few things that I, want, I really wanna teach you this morning in regards to the context uh, of this scripture. First, number one, you have to understand that in the book of Acts, it's often called the Acts of the Apostles or the book of Acts. But I would argue any day of the week 
that really, maybe it should be called the acts of the Holy Spirit because the, 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 the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, is really the main character of the book. He's actually referenced over 50 times in the book. Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And I know that Paul is a main character and Peter and so forth, but it really is the Holy Spirit who's prompting the apostles, who's inspiring the apostles to teach, to preach, to suffer, to stand firm on the gospel. It, it really is him who's moving and orchestrating the events that we're reading in history and in the book of Acts and the early church. And with that, as I was spending time with the Holy Spirit this morning, he told me to remind you this morning to, to, to understand that he's not forsaken you, that he's not, for, for, that he's not abandoned you, that he's not forgotten you, that he is so in love with you that he's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. And, and, and in fact, he's been telling me to tell you that he's been knocking on the door of your heart. And you've been, he's not gonna beat it down. He's been saying, son, daughter, let me help with you. Let me help you with that problem. Let me help with that stress. Let me help with that depression. In fact, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you this exactly as, as if he's, he, he's, he has his arms right around you. In fact, when you're praying, invite them in to the circumstances that you're facing. If you're facing anxiety, if you're facing depression, if you're facing just trials in your family, ask the Holy Spirit, I invite you in to my world right now. And, and pray this, God, I pray that you open up my eyes to see your work in my life. Oh, come on, someone, all right? I pr open up my eyes, Holy Spirit to see you move in my life because I guarantee you right now, if you're a believer, God has been up to something in your life, whether you see it or you don't see it. God wants you to see it, to take some time, to close your eyes and to fold your hands in prayer and meditate and say, God, show me how you've been alive and moving in my life in these times. I want you to know that some of us feel stress and anxiety. We feel overwhelmed with the information out there that is inundating our life. I, 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 would, I would argue to you, you know what, how about put the phone down for a week? How about stop watching the news all the time, every time, and look at the good news, read the good news, and see what God is up to, all right? Because we can be flooded with all this misguided information, but it's important to know what God is doing in your life. And most of all, the Holy Spirit, remember Jesus said this in the Gospels, it's better that I go away. What, Jesus? No, I want you here. You can't leave me, Jesus. Jesus said, it's better that I go away. Why? So that the advocate, the helper, the counselor, all right, will come. All right, he's here to help you, guide you. He's here to lead you and he's here, to, he's your advocate, all right? So, and I pray, you ought to get in the room, close the door, Take some time, be alone, sit outside in the backyard. Don't look like a weirdo, you know what I'm saying? But just, but just seek his presence and let him speak to you because I know he's with you in the name of Jesus in these times. All right, let me get back to the text. So the Holy Spirit is the author. He's the main character of the text. He's moving, he's impressing, and he's still doing that this very day. One thing that as I was spending time in meditating, on this word, on this, on this message in this very chapter, as it stood out to me that Paul says, I serve. Let me see verse, I think it is verse 18 or 19. He says, I serve the Lord with great humility and with tears, although I was severely tested by the plots of the Jews or the opposition. I want to let you know that it's important as Paul's talking to the elders, he's explaining himself to them. He says, I want you to know that I wasn't just a preacher. I practiced, you saw how I lived. Uh, I practiced, you saw how I practiced what I preach. I served, I served. And let me just share something with you this morning. Just because we're in coronavirus, just because our church is not open, does not mean that we're not so still not supposed to serve the Lord our God. It doesn't mean that we just sit on our butts all day, all right, eating some potato chips. You know what I'm saying, all right, to my gamers out there, all right. Uh, it means that we serve. You say, Pastor Michael, I don't know if I'm a strong enough Christian to serve. You say, Pastor Michael, I don't know the Bible that well. Pastor Michael, I barely know how to pray. 
Let me tell you, you're you're still able to do something. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you call yourself Christian, I I wanna inspire you this morning not to be just a consumer, but be a contributor. Be a contributor to the work of God and the ministry of God. And that's what Paul is talking about. He's he's talking about the ministry of God. There's no better service that you could ever perform or work in than the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you say, Pastor Michael, I may not be able to do this. I may not be able to do that, but you can do something. You can smile. You can write. If you can sing, sing a song. All right, if you can do this, do that. If you could do this, do that. All right, all for the glory of God of God. You can knock on your neighbor's door. You can, you can check on family members and grandparents and friends, grandparents and so forth. You can do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that as Christians today, we, we're not supposed to be just, just sitting in a, in a time like this, but serving. And we, although we may not be able to serve at the church, we ought to serve in the world. Remember on Sundays, we gather right now, this Sunday morning, as you're watching, we're gathered Why? So we can scatter later on, scatter in the workplace. So we can scatter in the marketplace. When we're we're waiting in line, buying our groceries, we can serve right there with a smile. We can serve by praying. We can serve by doing this and by doing that in the name of Jesus. And, And our philosophy of ministry at our church has always been every member is a minister. Every member is a minister. You say, Pastor Michael, I am no minister. Uh, You don't need an ordained official title to minister, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Serve him wherever you're at, all right? You don't need titles and so forth. Another thing that stood out to me in the scripture that is so powerful is watch this. Uh, He says this in verse 24. He says, uh, he's talking about um, going to Jerusalem. And he's saying, however, verse 24, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only, watch this, if only, somebody say, if only. Write on the chat, if only. If only I may finish the race and complete the task. Let me say that one more time. If I may only finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus had given me the task of testifying to the, God, to the gospel of God's grace. Let me tell you, five years ago, the Lord inspired me to start a church. And as I remember uh, looking up maybe the name or what it would be called, I remember the Lord had shared with me, Michael, I, I, I had found a painting called The Calling of St. Matthew. And Matthew's story is so amazing. I'm not gonna share all of that. But in, after studying that painting and reading about it and studying the scripture, it led me to call our church the calling church. And, and it's synonymous with this scripture that I'm reading to you right now. I believe you have a destiny on your life. God does not make mistakes. God is not part of mistakes. You have a destiny, you have a path over your life. And right now, uh, one of the things I tell myself, I am on mission. I am on mission, even though we're in coronavirus and the world is seemingly falling apart at the very seams, I am still on mission with the greatest message in the whole entire world for the greatest cause you could ever get behind. We're at the cause church right now for the greatest cause you could ever be a uh, fight for in Jesus name, which is the gospel, which sets all men free in the name of Jesus. So you have a destiny. You have a purpose. Oh, the, are you running your race this morning? Come on, someone. You know that you have a special assigned task to your life with a, sp- a special set of skills and, and, and uh, that God has graced you with uh, this morning. So are you in the race? Paul says, I'm concerned about finishing the race. I know trials may come. I know tears may come. I know may hardships may come. And that's the sign of a mature believer, isn't it? Because we don't want to get involved with things that are too hard. But Paul is concerned about his purpose for the very reason in which he was born. Come on, y'all. I want to follow that purpose. I want to, I want to fulfill a task in which I was created in Jesus' name. Let me tell you, you have a task. You have a, a, a sovereign plan that God has purpose in your life. Do you know that plan? Do you know that task? Why not get to know that? Why not seek the wisdom of God over your life uh, for that? And may he grace you to continue on that path and plan. And most of all, let me tell you, that plan, that your purpose is to be part of his plan. 
which is to, to help people understand the Lord, uh, under, have to understand redemption and forgiveness and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's, so that's my point is be focused on the message, not the mess. Right now we live in times that are so divided and so uh, scary, to be honest with you. And for a lot of Christians, we're focused on the mess more than we are on the message. Come on, someone. We're focused on sides. What side do I need to choose on? Honey, do I post this or shouldn't I, po- I post this? Or what do I need to say? And if I don't say this, am I wrong? Am I racist if I don't say that? All right. All right. And uh, all the mix, we're in a mess right now. Let's be focused on the message, the message of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, some things that I meditate on all the time is this. I often wonder uh, when I'm in heaven, will I have lived differently? Because eternity is a lot longer than this moment in life. The Bible says that my life and your life is like a vapor. It's here and it's gone. It's here and it's gone. So when I often think, you know, when I'm in eternity with God, Would I have done anything different? Of course I would have. Of course I would live a life uh, differently because I know that I just get this amount of time. Let me tell you right now, don't focus, don't use the time to just focus on the mess. Use your time that God has given you, the task he's given you, the purpose he's given you to focus on the message. Let me tell you, culture is changing. Culture is always shifting. Culture is here and then it's there. But let me tell you something, This this word, The message, the gospel will never change, all right? It's the only hope for humanity. Humanity is fractured. Humanity is broken. Humanity is in chaos. And the only true hope that it has is the gospel, is Jesus Christ, who has come to redeem all mankind in Jesus' name. Uh, Before I go, I, I have one more point for you. And uh, it says this in Acts chapter 29, verse 30, 20, verse 29 through 31. He says this, uh, Paul saying this, talking uh, uh, to the elders of the church. He says, I know that after I leave, watch this. I know that after I leave, remember he's saying, I'm never going to see you again. How sad is that? How difficult is that? I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort. Someone write distort in the chat right now. Men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. The word in the Greek for uh, guard, so uh, be on guard. Paul says be on guard. The Greek word for be on guard actually means Gregorio. Gregorio, which means to stay awake or to be alert. In other words, it means stay woke, family, all right? It means say, stay, say, stay woke, stay woke. Paul is saying, when I leave, I'm not gonna be here with you anymore. God has commissioned you to lead this Ephesian church, which we'll see in 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, that Timothy in his 30s, perhaps, becomes the new leader of the church, and he tells them, stay woke, fam. In other words, he says, know your doctrine. In other words, he's saying, know your word. This is the unadulterated word of God, infallible and mutable. And people will try to distort this to gain followers for their selfish desires and for their, for their, for their own benefit. But, but it's important to know our doctrine. We're, we're seeing this today. We're seeing people, even Christians. I have to tell you, in Bible school, uh, 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 I went to uh, Life Pacific College, which is in San Dimas, which is an amazing uh, uh, Bible institution, received an amazing uh, degree there with just great teachers and doctors who just poured into us students. Uh, great training. But even there, I had seen uh, former uh, students and classmates and even faculty get rid of their faith because of the pressing uh, times and the pressing, uh, because of culture. It's in, let me tell you, culture will change. Culture is here and it's there, but the word of God will never, never change, all right? 2 Timothy 3.16 says this, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training for righteousness so that the man of God or the woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good 
deed, good work or good deed. It's important in these times in which we live that we measure everything as Christians with the canon of scripture. In other words, does that line up to the values uh, and belief systems of the word of God? So it's important to not be manipulated or swayed by culture or by the things of this world to know our doctrine because this is the truth of God's word. Let me tell you, there is tons of information out there. There's tons of it out there, but not all of it's true. The Bible is the true word of God. So measure everything that you do by the canon of scripture, all right? What, what, what's disheartening, especially because I'm a biblical studies major slash theology, was disheartening right now because we live in a comment and click, a click and comment culture is just seeing scriptures that are so taken out of context because they're using scripture to back something that has nothing to do with a cause from the context of the Bible. Oftentimes we, uh, we see people that do that all the time. We manipulate the scripture. We take parts of it that we want to benefit and uh, benefit uh, certain causes or certain desires or selfish desires or even sin, all right? But it's important to know our word in these days and these times, to stay in our word daily uh, so that we're not manipulated or swayed. That's what Paul is telling the Ephesian elders and the Ephesian church is to know your word because people, watch this, he's saying, Christians even among you are going to rise up and distort the truth. Watch this. The truth has always been under attack because there is another force at work here. His name is Satan. Satan has always been after the truth since the very beginning, since the very garden. In fact, Satan is the father of all lies. So that's why we need to guard ourselves. We need to stay woke, family. Come on, y'all. When you're watching TV and when you're watching the news, someone say, stay woke. You need to stay woke uh, when it comes to those things. When you're on social media, stay woke and know your word. Do not be manipulated. Do not be swayed by the culture and by the times. Know your word. Be on guard. Stay woke, fam, in the name of Jesus. Uh, 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 so I just really want to encourage you this morning to stay in your word. Like Paul, he's talking about be on guard, stay woke. He's talking about serving. I serve the Lord with tears and with trials. And let me just tell you right now, some, some of you are scared to serve God because of trials and tribulations and of tears. Let me tell you, whether you're a Christian or not, you will have trials. You will have tears and you will have tribulations, all right? How about see your life right now through eternity's lens? Are you serving the Lord? Are you in his word? Are you staying woke, fam? Come on, someone. Are, are, you on the, are you living for the mission and the message? Right now, are you, if you were to die today, would you spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ? If you had perished today, watch this, would you be happy with the life that you lived? Not for your benefit, but for the benefit of God. Would God be getting his investment out of you by giving you life and redemption? Would you be happy with the things that you have done? Come on, someone, watch this. Why not start today? Why not start serving the Lord where you're at by giving someone a smile, by praying for someone, by loving people, and by loving, how about even starting with your family, by loving them, all right? Why not look at your life through eternity's lenses? Five years ago, I had, uh, I had this burden in my heart in a time of praying and fasting. It was a time uh, uh, that we had, uh, I used to go to Faith Community Church, one of the best churches in the world with the most amazing pastors and my pastor, Dr. Jim Reed. And every, every time we did something called Regenerate and I remember just praying and fasting and taking it seriously and waking up early at 6 a.m. to just pray and fast, all right? And uh, I remember in that time, in that season, I, w I was just finishing my Bible degree. I remember in that time, in that season, I kept applying for um, positions at churches as pa being a pastor or youth pastor and so forth. And I remember that the doors would not open. It was so closed. Uh, it, it, it was like, I, I was so sad that they were never opening. And I remember why they were not opening because God had told me in a time of prayer and fasting that he wanted me and my wife to start this church in Pasadena, California because he has a message that he wants to speak through me, that he, has, uh, that he wants to give people hope and he wants to touch m this generation, millennials, because we're struggling right now with some issues, all right? So are you happy with the way you're living your life if you look through it through the lens of eternity? And that's what Paul is saying right now. I just wanna finish my race. He's, I just wanna complete my task. 
And you know, he wants to finish his race to compete for the reward and receive the crown of righteousness, of eternal life. Right now you say, Pastor Michael, I'm not on my race. Pastor Michael, I don't even know my task. Why not give your, your life to Jesus today, the one who made it? Why not live for a higher purpose that the, than the world could ever give you? And when you live for this purpose, the very cause of Christ, you, are fu- you will feel such a fulfillment that the world cannot ever give you, such a peace and such a joy. Let me tell you, serving the Lord for the last 10 plus years of my life has been the greatest honor. I've seen people come off drugs. I see families change. I've seen miracles in my own life and miracles in people's life. I have uh, submitted myself and surrendered myself to the complete word of God and I I have never seen my life go astray times have been hard times have been good times have been difficult I have seen triumphs and victories and defeats in my life but this has never led me astray the word of God I found my wife I found I had my daughter I found my calling I found my purpose I found a church family called the calling church that I love in Jesus name why don't you give your life to Jesus this morning I'm talking to someone right now, you know, you feel it in your heart that God is calling your name and he's given you a purpose and he's given you a passion and he's given you a task, but you've been afraid to pursue it. Some of you have no idea what I'm talking about and you right now, you just need to give your life to the Lord. I would love to pray with you this morning, a special prayer of invitation of receiving the Lord in your heart. And also another prayer that for some of us, we know the Lord, we're just not on mission. We're not living out the message and we're not on our tasks. So let's go ahead and pray. If you, uh, if you would love to receive the Lord in your heart right now, I know some of you have been watching, you've never been to our church. You've been pursuing Christ. You've been kind of seeking him, kind of, kind of just timidly. Let me tell you, God is never gonna bang the door of your life down. He's simply gonna knock and say, son, daughter, I'm the one who made life. I'm the creator of all life. Why not accept me and receive the forgiveness of your sins through the person of Jesus Christ? If you say, pastor, that's me today. I'd love to pray this prayer with you. Go ahead and bow your head. Repeat this prayer after me. Here we go. Say, dear God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. I believe I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a savior. Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new. I wanna live for you. I'm done with my own purpose. I wanna live for a higher purpose. Receive me this morning and I know you love me. I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. I just wanna congratulate you for if you received the Lord uh, 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 for the first time in your life, I'm so happy for you. That is the best decision you could ever make. Make sure to stay tuned every week. And why don't you email us? There's gonna be a third, lower third come up right about here at Connect at the Calling LA. We wanna hear from you. We wanna get you in the word so you can grow in your faith. There's another group of people I wanna pray for really fast, really quickly. If some of you know that you have a calling, you've been, the Lord has tugged on your heart about this and you've been timid about pursuing it. And somehow maybe even the calling church stood out to you because you know you have a calling. Let me tell you, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid when God walks with you, that is the most powerful thing that you would, the powerful force you would ever feel behind you is the person of God walking with you as you fulfill the mission and the purpose that God has for you in this world and in this life. Let me pray for you, Father. I just pray for the people that are watching, the people that I, I ha- are even in my heart right now as I think about them, who know that they have a calling, that they know they have a purpose in ministry, that they know that they have a servant's heart and wanna help uh, live out the cause of the gospel in this world. Lord, whether it's being a preacher, whether it's being a pastor, a life group leader, whether it's singing, God, whether it's doing whatever, starting a nonprofit organization, offer the glory of your name. God, I pray that Holy Spirit, you would inspire them, back them, give them, uh, give them the strength, God, and open up their eyes to see your work at their, in their life. And like Paul, may you help them be on track, complete the purpose that you have for them. Father, this life is too short This life is a vapor, it's here and then it's gone. So God, we ask for clarity upon your people right now that they would compete in the race to win the prize, Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody said, 
Amen, amen. Church, it's been amazing to be with you. I love you. I'm so grateful that we had this time together. By the way, baseball is back. Let's go, baby. We got a 60 game season. Let's go Dodgers in the name of Jesus. We know Jesus loves the Dodgers, all right? Hey, let me give you a benedicting prayer, prayer, prayer and blessing. We love you so much. And I thank you so much for this opportunity to encourage you and be with you this morning. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his undivided attention and peace in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Everybody said, amen. God bless you, church. I love you so much. <laughs>